Blood for the Blood God and Skulls for the Skull Throne. It's time to have a look at a beginner's guide to the forces of corn. I'm Chris and this is Game Chambers. So like in all our other videos, we're going to have a bit of a chat through how to build a basic army with the corn, and then we're going to take them into a ranked game and discuss what we're doing and just see how we go about adapting and modifying that list and playing it on the battlefield. Now Corn's not a faction that I have a massive amount of experience with. I have played quite a few games. I do understand the basics of the units and how they work, but I wouldn't say that I play them at a competitive ladder, which makes it probably a really good thing to demonstrate and show as an example. As for all my army builds, the first thing we're going to do is get some capture weight. Now this corn has got a couple of really good options for this, and it will vary depending upon the matchup. But you probably want a nice core of Chaos Warriors. You can probably also look into a couple of spawn to help you hold the line. Then you want to look at some mobility. So Flesh Hounds of Corn are fantastic. We might grab a couple of them. And Chaos Warhounds are also really good as well as being full capture weight units. Now we've probably gone over a little bit. You might not be able to afford a Lord, but let's put one in and drop away all of his abilities. <coughs> and uh, we could consider adding some of these back in, so Bell of Fury is a nice breath attack, can be quite useful. These are, most of these abilities are actually quite good, but we're going to leave him stripped bare at the moment. And to uh, balance our army out, we'll probably remove one of the Chaos Warriors. So we've got our core forces here, which are going to hold capture points. We've got our nice cheap general. Corn doesn't have any spellcasters, so we don't have to worry about that. And we have our mobility here to reach out, to hit other points, and to capture other locations. For sort of standard um, reserves, the cultists are a fantastic unit. They give you mobility and they give you the gate of corn. We might just take one. A lot of people will take two. A lot of people even take them in the starting army. But they are. You got a thing you got to remember with them is that they're only worth two capture weight. They might fight really well and they do bring a free unit of bloodletters for, I think it's 45 seconds. Does it tell us here? No, it doesn't tell us the duration. But. But yeah, they are a very useful unit, but you're not getting much capture weight. Because this is a starter, learn how to play army, we want capture weight as our main thing. Now for what else we're going to bring in, it's really going to depend on what we're up against, but we do need more capture weight. So most most armies have some form of large, so we're going to bring a couple of halberds because they'll never be useless. Most armies also have some sort of armor, so we'll bring a couple of them, and then some more warriors with shields. That gives you a nice solid core of capturing units. Might grab another spawn as well, because then you could potentially have one on each point. And from here you've got quite a few little different options. You go more hounds and uh, furies. You could grab uh, some cavalry, although the cavalry is not the best in the world. You grab yourself a soul grinder. But what we're going to do is we're going to leave it at that for now, and then we'll change and modify it depending upon who we end up matching with. So we'll call this a corn hook. Oh, lock is on. Corn starter list. Um, cool. Alright, so we've got a basic structure of a list there, so let's jump now into ranked, see if we can get a match, turn off team merging, and see how we're going to modify this basic list to go against our opponent. Okay, we have matched with Willy instead of Dadudu, so let's see if uh, Willy has a better better connection than Dadudu, and we'll see how we go with this match. So he's locked in already. He's chosen Nurgle. And we now have the bug where we can't see our armies. So let's go through and sort out our build. Now against Nurgle, the Chaos Warriors, they're generically useful, but they don't have... Uh, their shields are wasted. I think we're probably better off taking Bloodletters, but we'll go with them anyway. What was our basic army? We had them. Uh, we had a couple of them. Do we have two spawn? And what else did we have? The halberd? I think that's what we had. Yeah, we're going to stick with that. Then in our reserves, do we want furies? So we're not... The Yeah, we want a couple of furies just in case he comes death's heads. Just to chase them off and to protect our bloodthirster. Um, we'll bring in an exalted bloodletter because they are very good at killing all the Nurgle infantry. I'd imagine the Blood Crushers would be as well, but it's not something I can say that I've tried. Now, the Chaos Warriors' dual weapons should be pretty good here too. 
I can't even remember what we went with for the generic. We do want another spawn though, I would say. And we need things with capture weight, so let's go a couple of them. A couple more halberds. So we got 2200 still left. Uh, how are we looking for mobility? Can we afford some blood crushers and I'd like some warhounds. So if I reduce that down to a blood letter, I can get a warhound. And then we have, because the warhounds are good with their high capture weight, cheap, fast. Probably do alright against Nurglings, I haven't tried it. So we've got lots of capture weight here. So everything except for the blood crushers in our reinforcements are capture weight 6. And everything in our main army except for these blood, uh, flesh hounds and our lord are capture weight 6 as well. So we've only got 4 units that aren't max capture weight. Uh, everything should trade fairly well into Nurgle infantry. We do have some halberds to deal with the large. We do have blood letters. Um, they were just basically to get a cost saving on the Chaos Warriors with dual weapons. And the Exalted Blood Loads are just an elite unit. Same with the Blood Crusher. So let's see how we go. Like I said, not a corn expert, but uh, we'll have a shot at this. Okay, so Mountains of the Morn. This is a pretty good one, so you can fight quite easily out to either side. It's a very symmetrical map as well. well. I think some people do have issues with the amount of forest on either side, but to be honest, it's um fairly minor thing. I don't think it's really an issue at all. Chaos Warriors. So we're gonna send these Chaos Warriors straight down the middle. And the spawn directly behind them. The idea here we're just gonna push straight on to two. <coughs> And we might push the halberds up to one. Flesh hounds, we're just going to keep them in the in the bush here. That's going to be group one, group two, group three, and the bloodthirster. Depending on what Nurgle brings, Nurgle can actually bring a very scary air force. So if they do, we will push him down to the ground. Now over here, we can summon flesh hounds to not flesh hounds, sorry, warhounds to capture this point quickly. If the points get that way. And we'll use the rest of our reinforcements as required once we see what Nurgle has brought. So we have a great unclean one, which is a good choice because that is something that will uh, melt of our infantry. Plague bearers, what do we got? Nurglings over here, plague bearers over here. So we can probably bring in a couple of warhound units here and just come, jump straight onto these Nurglings. Let's see what he brings this way. Now we don't want our infantry fighting the Exalted Great Unclean One. We also don't want our Bloodthirster fighting the Exalted Great Unclean One. So he will kill our Exalted Great Unclean One quite easily. What we want to fight him with is things like our Spawn. And to a lesser extent cycle charge the Bloodthirster. And try and keep our infantry away from him. Because he is going to just drain them all. So let's... Um, bring in some Furies. Probably should have brought them in from over here. But we'll bring these guys in just to hit the Nurglings. Now, you cut, you leave, you leave. We'll cycle charge. Let's just cycle charge into these Plague Bearers here and get some value. Where's our Hounds? Flesh Hounds. Let's try and just get some value before they get here. Okay, charge them back in. Furies charge in there as well. So yeah, he's just retreating them. Probably a good call, they're not going to win that fight. And we're just going to cycle charge into this unit just to try and get a few kills. So what's he bringing in back here? The soul Grinder, let's pull out because we don't want to get surrounded. Let's now bring in another spawn unit to camp on this side. Okay, Bloodthirster, get into the air. So now we do want this fight now that this now that that great unclean one's not with us and let's charge in on the flanks so get these guys into there and we'll get the furies up just having a bit of a look around get those spawn in you can hold line here what do we got plague bearers okay they're not gonna let us take off are they Let's bring these guys back. Let's not send them in now. 
Let's just pull back. We don't want to fight with the Great Uncle. Okay, Bloodthirst is out of combat. It's good. What do we have? Some spawn of Nurgle. That's okay. Now, we might actually bring the Blood Crushers in. Where are they? Just because they're going to be less susceptible to the... Uh... You guys get onto that point there. Bring those Chaos Warriors back. Alright, we captured one point. Now bring these Chaos Warriors around the corner here, just so we don't have to get shot by the Soul Grinder. Spawn don't matter so much if they get shot, so we'll bring the Spawn. Let's just bring the Spawn forward. Okay, send these guys. We'll just drop the um, drop those onto the Soul Grinder. And we'll just cycle charge those into there. Uh, what are we going to do here? So we've got some Plague Bearers coming this side. Let's just get some Dual Weapon Warriors onto that flank. Get these guys going around the back. The blood Crushers are coming in. Wait for them to do a little bit of work. And then pull them back. Charge into there. Let's jump into this way. So these halberds and the spawn. So we can actually give up this middle. I'm just gonna let this spawn die to hold hold things here. Alright, let's get some blood letters as well out on this point. Because he's got nerglings coming in. How are we doing in this fight? Oh, we've got uh, Plague Bearers coming in as a summon, so we're going to pull back. Blood Crushers, let's pull you back out of that fight. Okay, just circle you around. Get you in there. You guys come in that way. How are we looking in here? So we don't want to engage yet, if we can help it. Let's get a halberd unit in here. Get you in. Into the back. How's the damage? We're behind in damage, but that's okay. Not playing for damage here. Losing a few of our blood crushers. One of your units has been destroyed. Uh, those halberds are taking damage. Let's move them out of the way. Let's just get these guys again. Charge them in there. Charge them in there. Charge them in there. Okay. Let's just get onto that soul grinder again. He's got no protection. Just keep cycle charging into here. What's coming in this way? Furies. I'm not worried about that. I want more halberds. Probably not. Are they mounted? They are mounted. So I guess, yeah, we'll get some more halberds in the middle. Okay, let's move these guys back into the middle. Nurgle's starting to get the capture weight on us there. Send them that way. Bring these guys in. Cycle them back. Cycle them out. Now we want to try and engage on opposite sides. We do have the Horn of Corn, so we'll start dropping that shortly. Uh, so we'll fight those Pox Riders there. We might as well go in on that unit. Okay, let's get you back out. We'll charge you back in. Let's bring the spawn back in this way, and we'll summon in something new to hold that side point. So these are halberds, we want you in on there. Everyone else fighting everywhere else. Well, let's drop the horn of corn in the middle there. Okay, send them home, because they're warhounds, they will break. Okay, send the spawn back that way. Okay, we've actually passed a victory ticket breakpoint, so we will win on a single cap point now from here on. Uh, let's get some more spawn into the middle. Okay, bring these guys back out. Bring them back out. 
Now Nurgle has a massive amount of capture weight in the middle here. It's not a grind that we can win. So we're not going to try. We will try and we'll leave what we have engaged fighting there. But we'll focus on our other flanks where we're more likely to be able to hold. So in particular this side, get them coming over there. And we'll send this spawn unit over there as well. And we'll send these halberds over here. So there's no need to, for us to fight everywhere. So these two units, they're Plague Toads, so that'll be 12 capture weight. That's still full strength, so we are going to have to engage them off the point. Okay, these guys come in. We only need to hold the one, so this one is looking pretty good. Spawn are coming over. We'll just keep coming in here. We've got Exalted Plague Bearers in there now. But we'll see if we've engaged them off the point, which is what we want to do. Get some more Hounds. And just plonk them on the point. High capture weight, cheap, get there quickly. Now we might actually send these into the middle. How are we looking over there? Yeah, we're up to 4,000, so we just got to keep holding these points. So that great unclean one's going to do heaps of work in the middle, but it's okay. Oh, no, you guys keep fighting. Push into there, get those pox riders dead. Uh, we'll get some Furies because they're cheap. Let's go and fight those other Furies. How are we going over here? They're not on the point. Our Hounds are on the point. That's good. So we've got the two sides nice and secure here. Blood Letters can come in on that. You keep fighting there. You keep fighting there. You can watch. Yep, and our opponent's withdraw. So a good game to my opponent there. He uh, went the Nurgle Tide, which works really well, but you just don't want to fight it. So that Great Unclean one will just kill hordes and hordes of infantry. So I didn't engage it with infantry until such a point where it didn't matter anymore. So uh, we'll have a look at the values because I know some people like seeing the values. Uh, I don't know, it can be fun to see how many kills as Halberds did quite well. Cost to cost ratio wise. Um, Blood Crushers didn't really kill their, their values worth, but they were holding up the Nurgle army by cycle charging in and they were preventing the Great Unclean one. So you only got 1800 value. You'll see games where the Exalted Great Unclean one will get 4000 plus value just because of the amount of infantry that you can kill with his aura. Uh, Plague Bearers as well. So we managed to draw out one of the summons with our Hounds and our, our Bloodthirster and kept them off the point. Plague Bearers, they did alright. Uh, and here we go here. Cell Grinder, Exalted Plague Bearers. So I didn't see the final damage value. I think my opponent might have been a little bit in front, uh, which is... You might think that's a bit odd for Corn versus Nurgle, but I wasn't playing for, for damage. I play for the victory tickets. Um, Maybe I should play for more for damage, but I think when you're learning, you want to just play to win the victory condition. So the victory condition for domination is those victory tickets. So that's what you want to be playing for. Getting the top damage, killing the enemy army, doesn't mean anything if they can still win on a single capture and manage to hold that capture point and win the game from it. So I do have a 2v2 going up that shows exactly that, where my teammate and I, I think we're nearly doubling our opponent's damage value at one point and we still end up losing to the victory tick condition. Thanks for watching, we'll have some more guides up soon, let us know what you might want to see for the next one and please feel free to discuss in the, the comment section anything that you think I might have done wrong, could do better and we'll share our knowledge with everyone. So we'll see you in the next video.